All right, this is first grade, module three, lesson three. And in this lesson, students are gonna be comparing uh, multiple objects and they're gonna order them from least to greatest, and, you know, sh shortest to tallest or shortest to longest. And they're gonna be using indirect measurement, the indirect comparison. Uh, one of the ideas is, uh, is comparing lengths, right? And so this is a great opportunity for students. Here's just an idea uh, for st students to get out of the classroom, go on the play yard, and teachers for you to make this uh, really come to life for your students rather than always staying inside. One idea that I just came up with would be, you know, this playground, your classic playground of the United States. And you can ask students, um, what is, what is the length of from California to Montana? And then another idea would be how about the, the length, how many steps is it from Minnesota to Florida? And now you can compare the number of steps to go from California to Montana and the number of steps to go from Minnesota to Florida and just play this game. If you were going to go from, another idea would be if you were going to go from New Mexico to Texas to Washington, how long is that trip versus uh, a trip from Maine to Michigan to Florida? And the idea is just play these games. Let the students walk around, compare their steps, and compare the resulting distances. Just let your students have fun. So let's get going on this. So here it says we're supposed to be using the picture to answer the questions about the res uh, rectangles. And if we wanted to, we could give our students a little piece of string. We could give them a pencil or a piece of paper, a paper strip, in order to answer the questions if they wish. Or they can simply use logic and take a look at what's going on here and do their comparisons that way. So the idea is, well, which is the longest rectangle? Well, if we look at these, we might use a piece of string to figure it out, um, or we could just do it by inspection, and we can see that, well, it looks like B is the longest rectangle. And then, uh, if rectangle A is longer than rectangle C, then the shortest rectangle is. So the idea is we can definitely see through kind of a direct comparison that B is longer than C. And so if we know that A, which is a little uh, complicated, I guess, over here because it's cockeyed, um, if A is longer than C, so we're being told that A is longer than C, then we automatically know that C has to be the shortest rectangle. And that's because we already know that C is shorter than B, and if we're told that C is shorter than A, then we're done deal. We know that C is the shortest. Now, parents and teachers, um, this is kind of well, a missed opportunity because it's homework, it's paper and pencil based, um, when really probably the best thing for students to do is to go around and measure instead of pictures, go out and measure uh, real things. Um, pencils, paper, desks, chairs, soccer balls, footballs. And go out and let your students measure and compare things in real life rather than just paper and pencil. Now here, this is kind of a cool thing. It says use the picture to answer the questions about the children's paths. So how long is John's path to the beach? And the idea is we want to help students count their blocks, right? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So John's path is twelve blocks, and Cam's path is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14 blocks. So even though they're both heading to the beach, because they took different routes, Cam's path is longer than John's path. And then the last one is John's path is longer than Sal's path. So now we have to draw Sal's path. So John's path is 12 and we need it to be longer than Sal's. So Sal's path has to be shorter than 12, 
And, oh, I don't know, a nice way to do that, let's see, might be to say, just, we're going to go straight over, and boom, done. <laughs> it doesn't get much simpler than that. So we see that Sal's path is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So Sal's path is 8, that's less than the 12, and golden. Uh, this is a great opportunity, parents and teachers, to let your students differentiate and see how creative they can be. Can they make a different path that's exactly 12? Can they make one that's longer than 14? Let your students have fun in experimenting with length. And that wraps up first grade module three, lesson three. We're ordering objects using indirect comparison.